Are you looking for the best robotic vacuum for the money? We have the Shark IQ robot. We had it set up down here for a few months now. I've been testing it out, running it through a ton of vacuum runs, and I wanted to give you guys my full review of this thing in this video. First thing that I wanna note though is that this robot on the box here, it says, that's French, it says that it's good, uh, the dust bin is good for about 30 days. I was at Costco the other day and I noticed that they had these on sale. So they had a big giant pile of them and they changed the box not to say 30 days anymore. It just says weeks on there. Um, I can't verify whether or not 30 days or just weeks is good enough because we don't run the vacuum every single day and it also depends on how much stuff you have on the floor that's really going to make a difference. So uh, that was just one of the small things that I noticed, but it, I do love this self-emptying can down here. This thing is amazing. First of all, hi. Hi to all the new dads out there. This is Dad Reviews. This is where I give you my unedited, hopefully more authentic look at the products that we like, use, and have, and use to clean our floors. <laughs> so make sure to watch to the end so that you get my full review of what we have going on here. So this right here is the unit. The shark unit comes with the indicator lights here for whenever it's charging and how charged up it is. If it's connected to the Wi-Fi right there, if your clean button here, your dock button here, and this is the camera button or the camera uh, right in there so that it knows where it's going. The big front here is the bumper. Hadn't had any issues with this bumper whatsoever. It'll you know slowly tap up against something and then it'll notice and it'll turn around. Or sometimes it just kind of turns around just because it knows maybe it's in a room or something because of the camera. So uh, it's been great as far as that's concerned. Uh, on the back here, I can show you guys some of the hair issues that we have. So I am too close to a cliff. I am too close to a cliff. <laughs> okay, shut up. So my wife has really long hair. Like it comes down probably the, I mean, not like super duper long hair, but it's really thick. Too. She's really, and every time she goes to the hairdresser, they compliment her on how like lush and thick her hair is. Well, that's great for beauty, but whenever it comes to robotic vacuums, that seems to be an issue. I kept this box on purpose because one, I wanted to show you guys the 30 day thing, but two, down here on the bottom, it says self-cleaning brush roll, and they have the uh, another vacuum that has a hair wrap, and then over here, the shark one says no hair. That's definitely some hair right there. But I have to say that it's not taking up the full beater right here. So it is still able to clean, but I noticed that we do have an issue with the hair situation going on here. Now, whenever it comes to getting rid of the hair in there, a lot easier to do. I've used the Roombas before and I find that those, the hair gets really, really, really tangled up in there. It's really hard to cut around it. But uh, for this one, you simply open up the little flip top tap here flip top tap is that what that's called the flip top tap and then uh you pull out your 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 roll right here and you'll see that it also collects hair on there as well now another thing that i want to talk to you guys about real quick is that a lot of this thing has some good suction so it's going to pick up a lot of bigger things case in point i put this in my daughter's room two days ago and i'm pulling this out right now because i just noticed it they had this big giant piece of paper in there. We also find like, uh, we have leaves, a lot of leaves outside the house that gets come into the house due to shoes and whatnot. It pulls up a ton of leaves as well. The problem with these big things is that, here's another thing right here that, that's in there as well. It's like a little glitter sticker type of thing. But the problem is that it gets stuck right in here and it doesn't go all the way into the dustbin and then whenever it did its suction it through the suction can down there it uh it doesn't actually suction into the can right here and so uh that's another issue that we had although it's really not that big of an issue usually if something is stuck in the dustbin it'll say error number blah 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 something stuck in the dustbin or whatever the error is um but that is one uh small qualm that I had with it. Also, the hair is gonna start doing this. It gets kind of all balled up and tangled on the wheels. And so you just kind of have to pull it out every now and again to get it past the wheel well and whatnot. That's not as big of a deal. Just might wanna notice it every now and again. Also, after the months that we've had it, I can show you guys the brushes here. They are starting to get just worn 
I'm not gonna say that they're just you know need to be changed out or anything, but I'm I'm noticing a little bit of uh, of tear wear and tear on it. Um, same thing with these brushes right here, which these are actually super simple to change out. You just pop them off. Love that. I had the Roomba five something or six something, and they had like little screws that you had to screw in and screw out to get these things to stay on and off. These things literally pop on and off. Love these things. Also, these brushes, they spin a lot slower than the Roomba ones did. The Roomba ones, they go like super fast, and these are just like a nice slow sweep. And so whenever uh, the, the vacuum is trying to pick up things, the sweep is going really slow, and so it's just kind of pushing it into the vacuum section, as opposed to like swinging it all over the place uh, with the Roomba. You know, the bread if there's breadcrumbs on the ground, the brush hits it, and it just goes flying across the floor, and then it has to go try and pick it up again. So that's actually one thing that I really like over this Shark uh, IQ robot that I didn't like about the Roomba. Uh, as far as charge time, I really don't notice anything with the charge time because it has this automatic resume type of thing. So you just, um, whenever it's done uh, vacuuming and the battery's getting low, it'll just go and charge just like the Roomba will. Or if it needs to empty the, the uh, dustbin on it, it'll go to the charge, unload, and then keep going back out, which is super cool. I love that. These are the cliff sensors right here. So going off of stairwells or anything like that, hadn't had any issues with that whatsoever. Actually, my Roomba, I had had issues with that in the past before. Taking a look at the dustbin, this is where uh, all the stuff gets comes out of. It connects to the dustbin right there through this. It's got a little port and then you can, uh, if you need to clean the, this has happened a couple of times as well. It says something's wrong with the dustbin. You need to clean it out manually. Usually something big gets stuck in there. But as of right now, we are looking good. If y'all wanna see what the inside of the dustbin looks like right there, this is what we have going on. This is the little filter right here that you can take on and off. We probably need to clean that up a little bit, but you can see the inside of that as well to kind of get an idea of what we have there. Uh, you just pull these two little uh, tabs right here to push out, and then you pull it out to be able to get it out. Now the interior of the other side of the dustbin just looks like all that right there. As you can see, you can just basically see the brush right in there with all the hair on it, and uh, and it suctions really well. I was actually watching a video before I bought this thing about the suction, and the suction is what sold me on it, especially at the price that it was at. So now whenever it comes to the dock, this is the dock right here. After the few months, you can see that there's a little bit of dust and debris that kind of gets onto the bottom here, so I want to note that it's not gonna be 100% little nougat right there that may have come from this in here. Um, <clears throat> this right here is your charging ports. And as you can see on the back of the robot, it is right there and right there to be able to charge up the battery. Hadn't had to look in the battery or anything. I hadn't had to check it or anything. It seems to be working great. And the uh, dustbin, as you can see, we haven't emptied it in quite some time. So I actually need to do that soon. It's a little indicator light right there showing that it is, uh, whether it's charging or not. Whenever it's charging, I believe it's blue. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you guys real quick is kind of, it's not really, a bad thing it's just something that i noticed and that's how long it takes for the robot to dock whenever you press the dock button so i'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys now so y'all can get an idea of how long it takes so i just pressed it it turned green it's going to turn on y'all can see the slow sweep that i was talking about with the brushes there it's going to go in a full circle so that it can kind of recognize where it's at and then it, since it hit dock it wants to try and dock right here so it's going to uh, make the slow progression to it it's going to say yep that's it and then it's going to go backwards then it's going to turn around <laughs> then once it turns around it's going to go forward a little bit and then it's going to come back it kind of sweeps to the side and then connects you can see the connection right there and then we'll go ahead and let it evacuate to make sure we get everything out into there but notice that it takes some time for it to actually start suctioning it so there it is right there it is a little loud as well because uh it's a vacuum so we haven't had any issues with it waking up anyone at night but it does make a lot of noise if you sleep next to where this thing would be placed so that's definitely one thing that you want to be aware of um, but that is how 
makes a little noise. So it takes about a minute just for that whole process to happen right there. And as you'll notice, our blue light right there came on to show that it is charging and uh, it is doing great. If you guys, by the way, have any questions about this thing, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer any of the questions that y'all might have about this thing. Um, I feel like there was somebody who left a comment uh, on a previous video that I did, because I've done a whole series of these videos whenever I was setting it up, and it was all about the mapping feature on the phone, because there's an app that goes along with this as well. And if you download the app, the robot can sync wirelessly, and then you can, if you have like an assistant type of thing, you can you can turn that on and uh, be able to, you know, tell your Alexa or whatever, or Google or whoever, whatever you use to, you know, vacuum the floor and then it'll do it. I'm gonna show you guys how we empty this thing right here. I just go, come on now. Is it, oh wait, it's that button. It's a different button. Hang on, it's this button right here. Boom, oh, that was nasty. But it comes out with ease. Another thing that I liked about this vacuum and that I wanted for this vacuum since we just throw most of our dust uh, across the bin there across the fence there is that uh, it's a bagless system so you don't have to buy additional bags every month or however long uh, with this particular vacuum I like that it is a bagless system and uh, that's one reason why we went with the Dyson's whenever we were looking for a Dyson for the house uh, whenever uh, you know we were shopping for that type of stuff but let me show you guys now the mapping situation because I honestly look this is what the inside looks like I forgot to show you all this there's a filter right there as well for the the canister so pop that right back on there it's ready to go and let's take a look at the mapping situation let me see let me find that right there this little shark app and it's gonna load up right there. Okay, see so if you want to clean it, you can just press clean. There's a schedule here that you can set a schedule for. I have not set a schedule yet. And there's the map. So it tells you it's ready to clean and it's 100% battery charged. We're gonna click on map. And whenever you open up the map, what it should do using the camera that's on it, it should find exactly where it vacuumed. And this is ours right here. You can edit the map or you can delete the map if you want. But as you can see, this is the dining room right here. So this square right here. And I would say that it mapped it quite well. And then we have this up here is the foyer, which is this right here. We used to have a books uh, case right there. And that's what that little divot is right there. And then over here is the kitchen. It's basically fairly square. Uh, obviously there's the place for the refrigerator and that's why you see that little bump right there because it goes out into a little divot right there into the living room and then we have the uh, laundry room right here which is just a little smaller area and as you can see we have the chest freezer right there so that's why it kind of goes at a little bit of an angle oops y'all can't see that let's focus it goes at a little bit of an angle right there so we have steps in here so we don't have a map for after the steps. From what I understand, or from my experience, I should say, is this, if you have, if, if the robot station, the emptying station, is not in the same area as the room that you're cleaning, like our living room, there's no base station in there, we have steps, we can't actually start it from the base station, then it's not gonna make a map of that area. And that's one thing where the iRobots excel because we do have this uh, robot mop right here and it created a bunch of different maps for all the different areas of the house where we were using the robot. So I did wanna point that out to you guys uh, because uh, you, you, if you have multi levels, that's going to be an issue for you unless you buy more than one of the canister things. But uh, all in all, great vacuum. I'll link it up down in the description below. If you guys want to check it out, y'all can go read other people's reviews about it. Don't just take my word for it. But like I said, I've been having it for a few months now and I'm really loving it, even with the few hiccups that are in there. So go click that link and read other people's reviews. Thank you, dads, for watching. If y'all want to see my original unboxing of this video, I'm going to put that right there on the screen. Or if you want to see our iRobot mop. I'll put that right there on the screen. You guys go click one of these videos. I'll see y'all in those videos. Thank you dads for watching. That thumbs up is appreciated and dad out.